in this video, um, we're going to look at another example um, of how to determine when an improper integral converges or diverges. And uh, the example is to determine if the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared converges or diverges. This type of an example often leads to a very, very common mistake made by, made by students. So what we're going to do first is look at that mistake so that uh, you will avoid it hopefully if you encounter this, um, this type of problem on an exam or a quiz. So here's the wrong solution. The wrong solution is not to notice that this is an improper integral and evaluate this integral as if it was a proper integral. So using fundamental theorem of calculus incorrectly. So then the integral from minus 1 to 1, 1 over x squared dx, becomes, take the antiderivative of 1 over x squared, which is negative 1 over x, evaluated from minus 1 to 1, plug in 1 in there to get negative 1, plug in minus 1 to get minus a minus 1 over minus 1, which is minus 1 minus 1, to get the answer minus 2. Now, why is minus 2 incorrect? Uh, minus 2 could not possibly be uh, the answer because if you recall what uh, definite integral represents uh, when the graph of the function is above the x-axis. So let's graph 1 over x squared over the interval minus 1 to 1. So minus 1 over x squared has two parts. There's part there in quadrant number 2. It runs close to the x-axis and the y-axis. And similarly, there is part in quadrant number 1. And then if we mark off 1 and negative 1, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared represents the area that you see there. Now, that region is above the x-axis. And since we're integrating from minus 1 to 1, if that, region, if that region's area is finite, then um, we would get a positive number. And if the area is infinite, we should get positive infinity. If we're integrated properly uh, as an improper integral. But what we have as our answer is negative 2, which is impossible. Negative 2 cannot possibly be the answer. And so the reason negative 2 is incorrect is because this is really an improper integral. The function 1 over x squared uh, on the interval minus 1 to 1 is undefined at 0, and that makes this an improper integral. So we have to treat it as such, and here is the correct, here is the correct solution. I'm going to do use two methods um, to give correct solution. The first one, <laughs> integral minus one to one, one over x squared. We know that the function is undefined at zero, so we'll write it symbolically as an integral of minus one to zero, one over x squared, plus the integral from zero to one. 1 over x squared. Both of those are improper integrals. If one of those diverges, then the whole thing diverges. Let's look at the two uh, intervals involved. First intervals from minus 1 to 0. Let t be any number between minus 1 and 0. So as t approaches 0 from the left, that's how we define the first of these two integrals as a limit of integrals. And then the second interval is from 0 to 1. Let t be a number between 0 and 1. As t moves towards 0 from the right, 
that limit will give us the second improper integral. So minus 1 to 0, 1 over x squared dx is defined as a limit as t approaches 0 from the left of integral from negative 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx. And this one we can evaluate easily. So keeping the limit going, limit t approaches 0 from the left. Take the antiderivative of minus 1 over x, evaluate it from minus 1 to t. So this is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from the left of minus 1 over t and then minus a 1, so it would be minus 1. And let t go to 0 from the left, which means t could be small negative numbers. Minus 1 over small negative number is headed to infinity. Subtracting 1 won't change anything. So the first of the two integral diverges, and we should stop. We don't have to go any further uh, because if one of the two integrals diverges, that means the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared also diverges. So for completeness, let's do the second um, integral. Limit t approaches 0 from the right. Integral from t to 1, 1 over x squared dx, which is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from the right, minus 1 over x evaluated from t to 1. And that's equal to limit as t approaches 0 from the right of minus 1 plus 1 over t. And that, when you put in small positive numbers for t, that is headed to a positive infinity. And hence, we make the conclusion that the improper integral from minus 1 to 1, 1 over x squared, diverges. And uh, let's do another method, method number 2. So this method you have to be careful because if you're not sure about symmetry, you should not use it. As you saw from the graph, and just knowing in general 1 over x squared, f function 1 over f of x equals 1 over x squared is symmetric. It's an even function, so it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So using symmetry, we can rewrite the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared as 2 times integral 0 to 1, 1 over x squared. And then this integral is easily converted to a limit of integrals, a limit as t approaches 0 from the right, uh, integral of t, from t to 1 of 1 over x squared. Of course, everything times 2. And we just did this, something very similar to this. Uh, so this is equal to 2 times limit as t approaches 0 from the right of negative 1 over x evaluated from t to 1. And that's equal to 2 times limit as t approaches 0 from the right minus 1 plus 1 over t Again, that is headed toward infinity, diverges, and multiplying it by 2 is not going to change that. So once again, we make the same conclusion as we did before. Improper integral, minus 1 to 1, 1 over x squared dx, diverges.